It can be scary to be short of breath or air hunger as patients often call it. And uh, if, you're, if you're sitting around, obviously not exercising and there's no reason for you to be short of breath, why? You know, why are you trying to get a deep breath and feeling like maybe you can't get a deep breath or, or you know you're kind of shallow breathing from your shoulders. Um, you are barely moving, maybe walking around the house, but prior to this problem, which we're about to go into, you are an athlete, you would work out, and, and now suddenly you can't even walk around the house without being short of breath. So these are the stories I hear, and I was asked to go over how can it be that a hiatal hernia can cause shortness of breath. So what is a hiatal hernia? Hiatal hernia is when your stomach, which is located just below your ribs on the left-hand side, uh, right above it is your heart. So the stomach spasms and it gets pulled up, so between your mouth and your stomach is a tube called your esophagus. So as that stomach spasms and gets pulled up, it starts widening the opening um, at, at the level of the diaphragm and the esophagus. And so a hiatus is just a hole. So there is a normal hole that your, that your diaphragm has for your esophagus, but a hernia is something coming through a hole that's inappropriate. So the diaphragm should be here and the stomach should be nicely relaxed below it and now it's not it's spasmed and it's pushing up and widening that opening so that in its simplicity is a hiatal hernia so how could your stomach acting <laughs> inappropriately and spasming how could that cause shortness of breath now if i said how would that cause acid reflux you go yeah that makes sense my stomach's spasming it's a bag of acid it's shooting the acid up my esophagus and and i'm having acid reflux or GERD or heartburn that makes sense. But what does it have anything to do with your lungs? And that's what we're going to talk about. And at the end of this video, you will know exactly how and also know what to do about it. So here's the situation. As I mentioned, is the stomach is here um, and your diaphragm is right above it. So as that stomach spasms and pushes up and, and widens that opening, um, it is sort of running into your diaphragm, if you will. The diaphragm is a nice dome-shaped muscle. You have it on both sides of your uh, chest, so above the liver on the right and above the stomach on the left. Does a hiatal hernia, just ask, answer your question, cause chest pressure and abdominal pain? Absolutely, so we're gonna go into that now, how it causes chest pressure. So again, the diaphragm, and I always think of opera singers when I'm describing this to patients, because opera singers say, boy, can they get a deep breath and then they can expel a lot of air when they're singing. And that requires that diaphragm to bow down and then as we exhale, it bows up. And so that movement of the diaphragm is called the diaphragmatic excursion. And when it's relaxed and the stomach's not jammed up against it, it can get a lot of motion and, and you can breathe freely. But when that stomach spasms and it's pushing up against that diaphragm, now the diaphragm is in spasm. So you're still breathing clearly, but you're not getting that effortless air that you should be getting. And so you feel air hunger. You feel shortness of breath. And and people who, especially who are singers, and I, and I do speak to patients who are singers, not necessarily professional opera singers, but people who sing in the church choir, or uh, actually we've, we've worked with some professional singers as well, and because they're trained to belly breathe and, and really use that diaphragm, they can tell immediately they're, they're running out of air. But so can the average person, not singing, just going through life, feel this air hunger. So of course, as soon as you're not getting enough air, what do you wonder about? Let me go see my doctor and get my lungs checked out. And inevitably, if the root causes hiatal hernia, you're told your lungs are fine. And, and this cascades into other issues. So let's go over that because the question that just came in is, what about chest pressure? And it's, it's that same reason that diaphragm is spasmed and, and because you're not getting enough air and that spasming of the diaphragm, you can feel it all the way around. You can feel it in your chest. You can also feel it in your back because the diaphragm cuts right through uh, just above that stomach. You've got the heart and lungs above and then generally speaking, all the digestive organs below. And so the diaphragm cuts right through, right through the middle. So again, with a hiatal hernia, the other thing that happens 
is that you can get heart palpitations because the, the heart sits right above the stomach. So we get the, the diaphragm spasm. And also the other thing actually that I want to mention is as that stomach is spasming, it's pushing up on that diaphragm. So the diaphragm is going into spasm, but it's also getting elevated. And that's what can give you the chest pressure and also heart palpitations because now the stomach is getting in, in sort of in the way of the heart itself. Um, as far as anatomically speaking is concerned. So we should have the heart, we should have the diaphragm able to move nicely, and then the stomach is a nice relaxed bag of acid way below that. They shouldn't be um, encountering one another and encumbered, encumbering, yeah, that's not a word, um, getting in the way, <laughs> let's just leave it at that, uh, getting in the way of one another. So. That's where the shortness of breath is coming from. Unfortunately, uh, I have patients who keep, you know, complaining about the shortness of breath, and then the doctor puts them on an inhaler, and that's a problem because this is this is a drug that will tend to make you a little anxious, and having a hiatal hernia also creates anxiety, so it tends to exacerbate the problem instead of getting to the root of it. Because there's not anything physically wrong with your lungs, your diaphragm is in spasm and not bringing air in as, as well as it should. And so you get that air hunger or, or shortness of breath. So I hope that that explained the, the how and the why. Now, of course, what is, what's the cure for this air hunger? We have to get to the root cause of the hiatal hernia. So it is interesting that we have this cascade of symptoms like shortness of breath at the root of which is a digestive problem. But hopefully, my little anatomy lesson made sense because that is a absolutely the root of it. Now, some people say, what about this stomach pull down I hear about? And that's where you're sort of breaking the spasm of the diaphragm. Doctors of chiropractic can do that. Some physical therapists do it. There's nothing wrong with that. If you've had the problem for a very short time and it was brought about by something structural, meaning you lifted an overly uh, heavy couch, um, you ate a huge meal and then started doing sit-ups or something like that. And so meaning it's acute. This is a new problem for you. And it came about from a physical uh, activity that you did, then that breaking the spasm, physically going in there and breaking that spasm can relieve it and, and for good. But if it's something that keeps coming back, then you're not getting to the root of it. And in our experience here, while we do work physically with patients as well, the internal work with um, your stomach, your digestive tract is very important. Um, is the chest pressure mainly on the left side? It feels like having a heart attack. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, I'll come to that question in just a second. Uh, but just, just to finish uh, what I was saying is that um, you, you have to get to the root of it. And so, again, if it's just something physical you did, say you had a big meal and then, God forbid, you were in a car accident and an airbag deployed, that's something that can you know, give you um, your, your stomach elevated and spasm your diaphragm, but it was in like an acute injury type of thing. And then you can have somebody physically work on your diaphragm and it relaxes and, and you're done. But most of the time, it is at the root a digestive issue that has to be dealt with. And I've done a lot of different videos on how we deal with it. So the question that just came in is that she said she feels most of the pressure on the left side. Of course, that makes sense because your stomach's on the left side and it feels like you're having a heart attack, and it does. And I can't tell you how many patients I meet who've been to the ER multiple times, scared that they're having a heart attack. And with heart disease being our number one killer, there's nothing wrong with taking that trip to the ER and making sure for peace of mind that you're not having a heart attack because if you are having one, that's the place to be. However, after you've been told your heart is fine, now we have to get to the root of it. And more often than not, it's this hiatal hernia syndrome that we've been describing. So I hope that makes sense as to how those are related, how air hunger and shortness of breath happens due to a digestive problem called hiatal hernia syndrome. The good news is handling that, resolving it for good without drugs or surgery is absolutely available. Uh, does it cause bloating too? It does. Uh, I never felt bloated before and recently, yes. So yeah, the bloating happens because again, that poor little stomach is, 
is spasmed and it should be a nice relaxed bag uh, and accepting food in a relaxed fashion and then it churns that food around with all the acid in the stomach and that's that's its job um, but you get the bloat because actually that the stomach is so spasm sometimes you can get full easily you can you can belch you can have air that's trapped and once again because of the spasming and pushing on the diaphragm and then you get the bloat as well so there's a lot of symptoms associated with this and as complicated as it sounds with this long list of symptoms i mean i wrote the book hiatal hernia syndrome there's 20 different symptoms associated with this but it doesn't mean it's complicated it doesn't mean it's hard to fix but the way we like to do it is of course tailor-made programs to each individual so i don't have and and i know i'm sometimes chastised for this like i don't have the one thing the one thing <laughs> that you can take and you can do to solve the problem because there isn't one thing that's true for everybody and what i want for you is resolution so you can get plenty of one things on on the internet unfortunately they're anecdotal and worked for somebody it's not likely going to work for you and if it worked for that one person that's saying take blah it's it's not going to be a resolution it's just they got relief relief is great but we're all about resolution here at root cause so if you're serious about it it's been bothering you for a while and, and you really want to get it resolved that's what we're here for so reach out we're happy to help um, thanks for answering my question one more does it cause body muscle weakness it can it absolutely can um, and please reach out for a consultation if, if you want some more help